Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining me and my very special guests. They are two of the stars of the Tony Award winning best musical, Hades Town. You know her from Miss Saigon and him from Spider Man Turn Off the Dark. And they're both getting ready to do two separate concerts as part of the Radio Free Birdland series, which is produced by Birdland and Broadway World. Please say hello to my dear friends, Eva Noblezada and Reeve Carney. Hello. Hey, guys. Hey, Richie. We miss you. You have no idea how much I miss you, too. Same here. We miss you. We miss going to dinner with you and all kinds of things. <laughs> We're going to have to find a way to do that. We can get yeah. all masked up and gloved up or whatever. And, I'll, you know, we'll figure yeah. a way to do this. Sounds like a ball to me. <laughs> <laughs> as, long as, you're there, as long as you're there. We'll... How are the two of you and where are the two of you? We're great. Yeah, we're great. We're in New York. We've been here the whole time. Uh, been here since March 22nd. We, we actually took our first vacation days uh in hades town on march 11th, 11th. and uh, at night so we did the night show and then we uh started driving and on march 12th we found out that everything was shutting down but so then we, we were back. making jokes at least i was to the cast on the 11th saying like gosh we needed this holiday see you never we're never coming back <laughs> well you know because it did kind of feel at that point we were wondering at that why point we're still e there. why we were even still maybe doing the stage door we weren't sure because we do that every night and so it, it was becoming clear that you would potentially need to, uh, mm -hmm. sh I don't know, the whole shutdown, it seemed like it might be possible. I didn't think it would last this long though. I don't think anybody did. You know, everybody I've spoken to said it felt good because they could sleep for a week. They yeah. were sort of like, it was like, oh, yeah. this will only last a week or so, or maybe two weeks at the most, right. and then we'll go back. And then, and like I said, you two are on your way for vacation. Yeah. Yeah, which didn't really <laughs> feel like a vacation because <laughs> yeah. every place we would visit would like, we stayed at a hotel and Port Thomas and like two days later, it's like, we have closed the dining room and people are closing the rooms. Like, it's and you know, just, just to be safe. I mean, we were at a diner, like a, the Somerset diner in New Jersey or not New Jersey, in um, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania. I think it's called. And then, uh, you know, we, all the news is coming in and, and we're sitting in a booth and suddenly this woman just starts coughing really loudly and you, know, you, know, lung just, you don't want to be sick. Maybe that had nothing to do with it, but at that time it was hard to relax on vacation because anywhere you went, it was just feeling like the world was kind of, I remember that Getting moment. Was, that was looking back. That yeah. was actually quite funny. Yeah, but but the pie was very good. The pie was the <laughs> exceptional. <laughs> when were you able to put it all into perspective? Like you know, wearing a mask or gloves or you know, when were you able to process it all? Uh, I would say process truly without having an issue with it. Maybe three months ago. Yeah, like psycholo the psychological mm -hmm. impact of it. It's, it's it's a difficult thing. It's it's you know you want to be. The thing is, we've, we've always taken it very seriously and always worn a mask, but it's psychologically, it's, it's a bit of a, you know, it's a change for people. And uh, I, I remember when in our building, it's, we started seeing the signs from Governor Cuomo about the ma mask mandate, mm -hmm. or not necessarily, whatever, whatever you want to call it. And I uh, I remember almost going outside without one, because I, the first day, I didn't even know, I'd never heard of it. It, it, was, mm -hmm. it, it all happened quite quick. Do, do you have special masks? I mean, I still wear the yeah. blue ones, but all right, do, do you have I, your... Oh, you're going to... Yeah, I'm going to promote some. Okay, fine. I'll, well, I want to <laughs> promote mine, too. I love this. Where, let me see what my one is. Because I got to start getting some fun masks. <laughs> oh, no. Now, I, now I've, now I've uh, shown you that I'm wearing sweatpants and not actual trousers. Well, at so least you had pants on. Yeah. They ha they're very thick and beautiful, and I yeah. also have this... This pattern as well. You can find this. Yeah, if you guys know Fine and Dandy's the place 49th, to go. 49th between 9th and 10th and 11th. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, uh, they're <laughs> awesome. I have other ones that I can't find them right now. But yeah, Reeve has the cooler ones. But yeah, Mine are, are boring. You have the rock and roll ones, right, Reeve? You of got the cool rock and roll ones, right? This one I saw, and I it's my favorite, but I also have a really cool yellow one. It's just this is a little bit softer. So we're doing the same thing. So we finally got into the cloth and to the mask. So, we're, you know, I'm trying to zhuzh Preston up when he does go out. So we're trying to, you know, I got to get some show ones with like show posters. Like hate, yeah. hate, Hades Town has one, I think, don't they? Yeah, but it's. It, oh, yes, it's a little bit thin. It says on the package that it's really cool and it's a cool thing to have. But there's like a warning saying it, it's not like, you know, surgical grade or something like that. But, I, you know. Well, so what, what people can do is they can wear a surgical mask underneath and then put the beautiful Hades, Hades yeah, Town. That's right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, a lot of people do that. They have the extra filters and things. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, what, you want to do that. 
What are you both missing the most? I've been asking everybody this because, like you said, this happened really abruptly and everybody thought, oh, we're back in two weeks or three weeks or whatever. We're in the eighth month of this whole shutdown. I mean, you were, you know, you, you, eight shows a week is in your DNA. That's what you were doing, spreading joy to all these people. What are you both missing the most with not doing Hades Town right now? Um, I will say I don't miss eight shows a week. Yeah, that part, that um, part of it, you know. I'm serious. I miss Hades Town, but I do not miss doing eight shows a week. It's, and I, I miss seeing my friends in a normal type of calm environment of not having to worry about a pandemic. Um, I don't see anybody like, yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's just, you know, just yeah. normal life, like going to the gym, going to get a, your favorite coffee and having a chat with the barista that you, you know, you've known for like three years. Like you can't really do that in the same, like shoulders down setting anymore. Um, right. But it's like it's fine. Like we can get over that and 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 endure together. I'm not saying it's like ruining my life. That's just I'm not trying to do that. But it's just there's a lot, you know. I miss crying on stage with people and like making art with people. And I miss a freaking paycheck. But life goes on. <laughs> I love the excitement that the eight shows a week generates for New York City. So That's I really true. do miss that, like the buzz that you get from knowing that there are. 35, 42 shows, whatever, mm -hmm. do, doing that every single night. That's really cool. But, but I think it is a, yeah, it's it's a it's a grind. I mean, it, that's a grind that, um, it, like you said, it was a nice, the first couple of weeks was like, ooh, okay, yeah. it's nice to have a little bit of a break. Um, you, you need a break every now and again. But yeah, it would be nice for Broadway to come back. I, I think everyone is feeling- It will, like, it know, will. I think it's going to come back bigger and better than ever when it finally does come back. Yeah. When they sort of figure it all out. You know, Hades Town, what I love about your audience at that show is it's every age element. I mean, I've seen the show numerous times. I mean, there are young kids there. There are 20 year olds there. There are 40 year olds. There are 70 year olds. Why do you think people have fallen in love with Hades Town of every age? What is it? Um, it's not a pointed musical. It doesn't have like, it doesn't speak to a certain demographic and it doesn't speak to a certain age. It's just good poetry and it's good. It's a good timeless story. And everyone can relate to that, whether they've been through it before or they dream about it. And I think that's the world that Hades Town was constantly providing. Even now, like if you put your headphones on and listen to the album, you're still going to be transported to that world. Um, and, and I would say I use this word a lot to describe it. It's quite epic. Um, but not in a way that's far away from you. And I think that's what draws a lot of people in. Mm -hmm. Reed, for you. I think the, Aeneas is kind of wholesome approach. And I don't mean it like that. She probably wouldn't think of it that way. I don't think mm -hmm. she thought, I'm going to write a wholesome musical. But yeah. I think she did without, that's just who she is. Um, I, I think that that appeals to a wide range of people. I mean, the, the just the nature of the material. And I think the team did a wonderful job of picking the right people to mm. bring it to life. Cause I think that was important with this show too, because it is pretty delicate. It's not like yeah. a, you know, it's not necessarily something, I think it's something you, throughout the, uh, it's history in the future. I think you, you want to find people that do those specific things that they need them to do. Um, yeah, I don't know. Cause there are some shows that can, can function very well with, you know, no matter where you do it. Or, and I think that this one can as well, but you want to have um, that team together. It, it, it has a special vibe, I think. Yeah, and, and that's sure the community, which is well, you know, that's part of it. Yeah, you know, when, when the pandemic first came, the first month or so, you know, companies, cast were getting together to sort of run musical numbers and dialogue. Then as it went on, they were like, oh, now we're going to start playing cards and now we just want to get together. How are you staying tight as a company do you like do you zoom or stream yard with certain people or do you cook in no she's like no we don't we did it in the beginning a little bit then. we did it in the beginning and we would do it we do we there's a text chain that we're on that's a good night way to pretty much at least a couple times a day there will be people texting in it so we see those uh and i text but you know we all are texting each other in that but sometimes we'll stay out of the conversation because it might have nothing to do with us which it's is kind of cool tight-knit family it's not like we have to check each on each other every day and everybody has their own in, like individual relationships with people as well but um it'd be nice to have some type of you know um somebody wanting us to all get together but you know we're fine we're 
We're Hades Town. We can we can make it on our own. <laughs> totally. Some people I spoke to like I can't put my makeup on every day. I can't do it anymore. So it's like you know they they'll just go on audio. They won't put their video screen on. But you know they somehow everyone's sort of staying in touch somehow. Was that yeah. was that a shady comment to me because I did not <laughs> make up on Richie? Like, you look. I told you you look. You guys have reversed it on to what you're doing you, in there. You too, actually, no. both you guys. Maybe like being. You're right about Reeve. <laughs> It's all lighting in our house. It's all it's all the lighting I set up in here. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Everybody who I've had on, they're like, this is our area where we set up in our house to do like self tapes and everything else. Where are you doing that in your house? Have you have you set a well, you have a studio anyway, Reed, but I mean, is there is there a place in your apartment where you guys do like, you know, self tapes or auditions or whatever? Against the closet door. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have like a Seriously. Sheet, like a thick sound blanket. Like it's by a company called Audio Mute that um, allows you to block out sound, but the other side of it is a really nice shade of blue that looks like a self tape wall. So I just iron that and put it up and. See, it's good for his complexion. I couldn't be against a blue sheet. Uh, so you just do the closet door, Eva. You hold your own. Eva tea stained a sheet that's amazing that she I also uses. <laughs> No, because everyone's like, oh, I, I do my self-tapes in the bathroom because I sound better singing in the bathroom or someone says, I've de we've dumped our closet out and they set up something in there. And some people like, it just is what it is. It's a wall or a closet. Right. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully they can understand. I, I mean, think I, it depends. I, like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. My, my favorite part, wait, I want to hear, but my favorite part is uh, is the full body shot. That That's just a disaster <laughs> for me because like I have so much stuff. I'm like an 80 year old man in terms of my collection of things. That's not true. No, it kind of, and I love No, you're a time traveler. Okay, I love old, beautiful things. And so like, um, it you know, to do a full body shot in my house without getting 45 other things in the shot. It's, it's, like, it's the travel there. It's like this, you know, it's like, this is my body shot. And then you have to see the back of the body <laughs> the block, and then it's just standing there. Yeah, the slates are really awkward. <laughs> I don't even do them anymore. Are, are they hoping, I, we said the same thing, Preston said, are they hoping you have legs? I don't know what these full body shots are you yeah, know, when you're auditioning for something. Well, especially if, if if they're interested in you because of something else you've done. Go on Google. Thinking, <laughs> don't be lazy, go on Google. I mean that. But I've spoken to everybody else. They're like, Richie, they said, it's like hoarders. They're like, this is what you see. But if you look to the left or if you look to the right, it's hoarders. Or like you said, you pull back for a body shot and they're like, whoa, there's a lot of stuff in their apartment. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Next time, I'm just not going to oh. wear any pants and that's, do it. <laughs> yeah, in the, in the pandemic, too, my other favorite part is they're like, you know, start with a close and then pull back to reveal full body. How am I supposed to do that? I'm by myself. Like, <laughs> like I love that. I forgot. Sorry. I forgot. It's fine. It's not even important. Right. <laughs> no, but everyone's trying to find the new way to sort of do these self tapes at home. And it's just crazy how it all gets done, you know. So, yeah. you two, you know, did you out do an outdoor safe concert? We yeah, did a couple few things. Of, yeah. A yeah. few safe concerts. What was that like? I remember seeing a beautiful shot of you out on some lawn somewhere. There was like 25 guests or something mm -hmm. there. And you seemed to be like miles away or whatever. What was that day like for you two? It, it was weird. Uh, yeah, it, it, but nice. it was wonderful. Yeah. It was weird because it was the first, like we were seeing people in our cast that we loved, but we were also like being very like like masks. It was just a lot of like knee-jerk reactions to normal life. And then having to get pulled back because like oh, you know I don't know but it, it was awesome to sing Hades Town again for a day with 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 our peeps. Yeah, and it was cool because one of the producers on the show is a lawyer and a musician, and so he uh, hired us for the gig to play with his family. And we played with their family, who are amazing musicians amazing. as well. And he was he he uh, instead of a uh, Brian Dry's trombone playing, he played it on the marimba. It was so it was really cool. cool. It brought in the summer. Yeah. What? No, because it was great to see that. That was sort of early on. I wonder what it was just yeah. felt like, like to wear a mask, mm -hmm. take it off, then sing. When they asked us to do it, we were not sure. Even the car, right? Even up. though they were, you know, yeah, we just, we didn't feel, mm -hmm. like, yeah, it was just at that time we, we did, we've done a couple things. We also did this Sax uh, Fifth Avenue ad, and that was around the same time. And we were also very nervous to do that because it was like in July, all yeah. this stuff, and it just felt, but, you know. Kind of picking up. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is sort of the new now. Well, you both have concerts coming up as part of the Radio Free Birdland series, which is produced by Birdland and Broadway World. Eva, your concert is this Friday. 
uh, November 20th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then, Reeve, yours is December 3rd. It's a Thursday at 7 p.m. How excited are the two of you very about these concerts? Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm I'm also nervous. I get very nervous because it feels like I'm not there. So it's like a second Eva did it. And it's like, did she do a good job? Um, I'm nervous. But I'm very excited. It's nice to, like, sing again. Because I was going to ask the two of you. It must have been so great. I mean, this is the new now. There's no audience. I mean... You know, there's no applause. So what was the day like when you both went to Birdland and, and did these concerts? Like, what was that day like for both of you? It was great. Yeah, I wasn't sure if we were supposed to pretend that they were fully. Well, oh, no, like, yeah. They, yeah, they're all, everybody knows. They've all been they're, taped. They're yeah, they're, all, live. yeah, they're live in the sense that we didn't do any redos or anything like yeah. that. But it's just, obviously, everyone's figuring all this out with the best way to present it um, mm. in, with the technology and stuff. But yeah, it was awesome. I mean, Reeves sounds amazing. Yours sounds amazing. No, mine sound like... They sound oh. okay. <laughs> Sounds great. She, yeah. She, no, they, but I love also how you said the new now. I I, I, I don't know if this is controversial to say, but I, I hate that new normal, no term. normal. I hate it. I don't use that because it, it's just new. the new now changes like every day. I like that. Yeah. You know, so did you both tape yours? Did you film them both the same day? No. No, I actually filmed two on the same day. Yeah. And then yours was like two weeks later. Mine? I think so, yeah. But, um, it was cool because Reeve was so nice. He like came and watched mine and it felt like I did have an audience. <laughs> so that was very nice. Yeah. I felt like I had an audience. But it was hard not to clap because I didn't know if I was allowed to clap in his because like yeah, they're either. supposed to not. So it was like. Yeah. One person in the audience. Yeah. <laughs> it's enough if it's Reeve. That's no, great. but you know, you know, Reeve, you worked on television, of course. You know, Eva, you've done films and Reeve, you've done the same thing. So hey. was, was no. the. What? And something coming up we can't talk about yet, but she's also done television. That's not true. But we can't talk about what it is yet. All right, but now, now all your fans around the world are going to be like, oh, my God, they won't tell Richie what it is, though. No, but yeah. Yeah. Is, was, your, was your mindset like, oh, I'm taping a TV special without an audience? You know, Sinatra and all these people used to do it all the time. Oh, when yeah. You, when you look at these things. Or was it like, oh, my gosh, I've got to get used to this. Like, I finished my number. I think there should be applause here. Like, what was the mindset that day for each of you? I personally didn't love it. I loved singing again with Rodney Bush, my incredible pianist. But I, m part of the reason why I love doing my shows is for audience interaction. Like, you know, I go in there, I talk with people, I make a joke, we play a little drinking game. Um, so it's, you can't do that when it's virtual. And the only people who are in there are like mixing things and making sure the cameras, you know, whatever. So for me, I, I kind of felt like I was losing my mind a little bit because the only person I could direct my energy to was Rodney. <laughs> So it just kind of looks like um, a fun little circus concert, which I don't mind. I can't wait. I mean, I, I, I'd watch you anyway. It's going to be sensational. Reed, what was your day like for you? I, I, I mean, I think this, maybe partially this pandemic, I, I don't know. I'm, I, I think I'm realizing that I'm somewhere in the middle. I've taken that young personality test, and I tested uh, uh, as a borderline extrovert introvert. But I think I'm like, I am quite introverted. So for me, I didn't mind that much in a weird way. I, it wasn't that bizarre having the, I don't know. I don't know. It, it didn't bother me as much as I thought it would. And I, I kind of liked it. I, it. It was a different thing. I wouldn't want to only do that. Yeah. But the, after the first song, it felt pretty weird. Uh, like just no applause, but you put out all that energy. And mm -hmm. then you don't realize how important it is. I mean, you. I don't mean this in a bad way at all. Because I'm always very grateful to audiences, but you don't even realize the extent to which that is a part of the show when they're not there. It's it's just it's a weird feeling of putting all that energy out and then literally having it silent. It is true. It, that that is that is. A and you can't strange. tell if you're doing a good job. If that makes any yeah. sense. Like there's you can't see anybody's face. Like or like. <laughs> Unless you have you like woo. No, it's, I was. <laughs> No, you didn't do that. I wanted to, though. It was hard not to clap because it yeah. sounds so freaking good. And it was like, I don't know. It was interesting. And I would totally do it again. In fact, I, I told Birdland, like, when you're ready to have to let me back in. It sounded great in there. That's the other thing. It really, really sounded awesome. That is true. Well, like I said, Jim Caruso is the best. And so is Ryan Patternight, the director of, of these shows. You know, Reed, are you by yourself in your show? Is it you and just your instruments? Yep. Yeah. Oh, great. So you're, it's just what you normally do. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. And that made it easy for this time period. <laughs> so did you bring everything with you that day? I mean, your whole setup and everything yeah. else? Yeah. And I one really exciting thing for me, I had the chance. I don't know if you saw any of this, but I've been, I, 
I just announced it this week, but I, I've started a, an effects pedal company. I've actually got a bunch from here, but like I'm building these by hand, these uh, effects, electronic effects pedals for guitar, but I got to use, I, their maiden voyage was at that concert. So I, I tr tried out three of the early models. It sounds so good. It, it's really, at least for, thanks to you, for what I'm looking for, <laughs> Because I designed them for myself, but realizing that a lot of people are looking for this sort of thing. So mm. that was really cool. And people will get to hear them for the first time, maybe. You like, play them. It's like the master yeah. playing his, his part. It's so freaking cool. So that, 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 that was fun. Oh, I love it. So Eva, who is your, who's your pianist that's with you? Rodney Bush. We've been playing piano together since 2017. That's great. Band. So it must have been fun to have someone that you know. It was fun. It when he's been my right hand man, you know, when we have little gigs here and there during the pandemic. So, you know, we're both kind of like, where's the cheddar? Let's follow the scent <laughs> before we get the money. Um, but it was fun. It was it was a lot of fun. And Bert, I had never been to Birdland before. Never. So it was it's, my first time. It's a gorgeous room. I said yeah. the set of it's so great. They're all so lovely and so friendly mm -hmm. they are. Um, what are the songs, Eva, that you're doing in your show? What are some, what, some composers or what shows you're doing? Can you give us a little sneak peek? Well, the thing is, I am not a fan of singing musical theater. I'd yes. rather listen to other people sing musical <laughs> theater. Um, so I, I, saw, I sang um, a rendition of Music of the Night. I sang um, one of my favorite covers of Goodbye Yellow Brick Road as a, as a finale, um, When I Look at You. Um, you know, so I, I I lean towards more the classic, um, more jazzy boozy ballads rather than like the no canary. You know, <laughs> yeah, I can't. I just it's hard for me. Got but it. It's, hard, it's a lot of fun. Reeve, what are you doing? A lot of your original stuff, right? Um, yeah, d pretty much all original. Maybe one cover, I think I did. Yeah, I forget okay. what I did. All right. I want to congratulate you on your award-winning album. I mean, really, really great. What your new album? All these awards you've won. Me? Yeah, for oh, your thanks. album, right? Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. How, I, how I, proud are you of this album, Reeve? Oh, I love it. Thanks for. I mean, I got. I had the chance to. You heard me recording some of it uh, in my mm -hmm. old apartment, but I did. Um, yeah, I, I recorded everything myself. I produced it and mixed it and engineered it and whatever. And yeah, I'm very, it's just like, you know, it's something I wanted to do since I was a teenager, just getting all of the a first batch of songs that I really believe in and doing them the way that I felt, you know, was the way I wanted to hear them. And mm. that was the best way to do it for me to just do it totally by myself, you know, because then you don't have anybody saying no, which <laughs> is good sometimes for an artist. Some people might not agree, but I think it is because you, uh, get the chance to really have the purest vision. Yeah. Well, the album is called Youth is Wasted. It's on all streaming platforms and available everywhere, isn't it? It is. It's yeah. amazing. Oh, I love the album. Like I said, we were there. I remember Preston and I were at your old apartment. I think it was like two o'clock in the morning. You had that great skyline of New York City and you played some beautiful numbers. Like, here's a new cut. And I was like, it was one of the most amazing things. Thanks. Up above the clouds. Yeah, above the weather. Yeah, exactly. Up above the weather. I love yeah. that. Yeah. You know, so how much fun, like, did you have doing these? Like I said, you know, what's really great about these concerts is the one saving grace about this pandemic is that anybody can purchase a ticket from anywhere around the world because you all have fans around the world and they can all watch this concert at the same time. And that's got to make you feel really great. Yeah. It feels, um, it feels like a little taste of, I keep saying normalcy. I'm not saying I'm like totally a being you know against the current with this time right now but it has a sense of normalcy of like everyone sits and comes together spiritually to watch or to listen to music and that's what's nice for these concerts like especially you know for people who are like we were just plucked from being able to perform mm -hmm. every day so it's very special i'm really excited to, to have to feel that and to know like so and so that people are watching from like this place and this place this is so cool like that's really special yeah, and also to help promote the venues for when they yeah. do come back because that's been really tough. Like for all these, mm. I mean, restaurants are one thing, but at least people can order takeout with the venues. It's crazy. So that. I'm glad that like people around the world will know about a place like Birdland that they may they may yeah. never never visited, and then when things come back and they're allowed again, they go oh, Birdland. Yeah, Let's go. hopefully.
Well, I think this is really cool that Birdland sort of thought outside of the box with Broadway World. Like, how can we do this together? And, you know, you go there, you it's it's like it's so beautifully done. It's three cameras. It's it's, top, you know, beautiful lighting and, you know, state of the art sound. And I mean, you got Jim there. I mean, it's such a beautiful room. I mean, everything is there for you to go into to record these concerts. Yeah. And they're, they're put out there for the world to see. You know, we all have to find a way of doing this right now because it's mm -hmm. going to be a while till we're all back doing it live again. Yeah, yeah. you're right. You know, so again, Eva's concert again is this Friday, November 20th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard. Reeves is Thursday, December 3rd. Tickets are available at Broadway World Events. They're available at Birdland Jazz. You just Google the two of them. You can get your tickets. There are different pricing packages. Really, really exciting. You know, so many Broadway debuts are really special, and so many people were supposed to make theirs this spring, and then the pandemic mm -hmm. hit. Yeah. And I'm sure they're going to when the theater comes back, bigger and better than ever. But Yours were both extra special because, Eva, you made yours in Miss Saigon. What do you remember about your Broadway debut as Kim in that show and that opening night? Crying. Crying. <laughs> a lot of flowers. It was, um, yeah, it was, it was a blur of tears, but good tears. Um, that was a special night. I remember more the closing night more than I remember <laughs> the opening night because I... There are pictures of me online of me looking horrible crying because I was so sad. Um, but they look funny. I don't know. There's a lot of tears that involved in my history with Miss Saigon. <laughs> <laughs> but was it everything you thought it was going to be? I mean, Broadway debuts are really special when you're up there and the show begins. And then most people say the show began. I took my bow. It was all a blur. I would say what's more, what was more shocking to me, well, all, ma mainly too, because like, I had already made my professional stage debut and I took a like a, a massive detour, but it's really like the opening night of a new chapter of your life. And I think people think, oh, the opening night is so special, which it is, but the, also like the time after, it's like the opening night is like a level up in your life. It's like it's like ending a chapter, then you started a new one. And then you, that, that for me was like the shocking part. Like you do this every night? Whoa, this is so freaking cool. I don't know, that was, that was cool. Yeah, and you wanna, um... I don't know. Actually, when Adina Menzel came to Haiti Sound, she gave us uh, advice, which it, I, uh, I I thought I thought of this already, like to a certain extent. But it's important because things are going so fast. I remember her saying something about like just really enjoy this, mm, time, yeah. which is just good advice in general. That was like before the Tonys, wasn't yeah, it? Before, yeah, before yeah, cause, because I think there, it is stressful. Usually during the Tony time, you you want it, you kind of have to do that with during openings and Tonys because there's so much external stress. Like I look yeah. back on my phone and I don't actually, I have like three pictures from opening night of Hades Town because there's so much happening. I have one, it was of the building. It wasn't even of the party. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember in, in, yeah, I had just like my, the flowers or mm -hmm. this, but but they're like, I, I remember in Spider-Man though, one specific thing I felt was, uh, I don't know, it's crazy because I don't think I could have actually done this, but I was like, man, I was so excited. I was like. I could do four more, three more of these right now. Like it felt like I could do like four shows a day, which I, I don't have. think I could have done, but like it, it's a lot of adrenaline. You have a lot of adrenaline on opening night. Cause I remember both of your opening nights, but we, and you were on this incredible journey with Spider-Man turn off the dark. Cause there were so many changes being done. I mean, talk about that whole process. What was that like living in? Cause you didn't look, you didn't listen to the news or anything else. You just sort of stayed focused on the show during the time period of working on Spider-Man. Didn't you? Yeah, I mean, thankfully I was raised what I would consider the right way, a right way. I was raised a, like a, by very good parents. So, um, you know, I, I would like to think that even having more credits or different things, I would have behaved the same way. Um, but I probably would have be, had more questions maybe because like, I, to me, it was not, I didn't know that that wasn't exactly how things always go. So, I mean, for me, it was not that big of a deal. <laughs> it was... You know, I, I, I thankfully we had an amazing cast of veterans who would say, you know, this isn't normal, but we're dealing with geniuses here, and our and I, I, was, I totally agree. So, for the, you know, they were happy to have things be a little bit different than in terms of things changing so constantly. But that, that's the thing when you're it, that was such a fine balance of that show because you're dealing with such incredible technicality uh, and um, you know machinery and things like that. Mm -hmm and trying to balance that with a story that everyone knows and delicate nature of a story. And so anytime you would change one thing, it, you have to change, like if something mechanically would happen that had to be adjusted, 
it would somehow affect the story. And then mm -hmm. it was just this back and forth that it, it, that's why it took so long. It's a long man. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember the first time you had to sing for Bono? Yeah, because I didn't actually even know I was auditioning. Uh, the only reason that I I went to New York for my audition for Spider-Man Turn Off the Star is because I lo love Julie Tamor and I didn't know Bono yet, but I love U2's music. And so I Julie asked me if, if uh, I would help out because uh, Jim Sturgis, I don't know if people know this, I don't know if I should be saying this, but I think it's kind of a cool story. Jim Sturgis was originally going to play Peter Parker and he backed out last minute, but he had some other work happening. And so they needed somebody to sing the songs quickly. And so I flew to New York really just because I love Julie and I wanted and I, I wanted to meet Bono also <laughs> and, and The Edge. But like as a singer, you know, I was thinking, oh, it'd be so cool to sing in front of Bono. So I do remember. And I, I guess like after that, he thought that maybe I would be someone they should consider. And Julie's like, I already thought, I was already, that's part of my plan. So that, that, was, that was cool. <laughs> I didn't know. But you weren't nervous at all. I was not, honestly, that's, uh, I wasn't, not really, I mean, maybe a, a slight nerves, but in a way I was just really excited to show him what I do. Mm -hmm. And I think that's probably the best way you can approach an audition, which yeah. I almost never can do. Because to me, honestly, most of the auditions I have, I feel like I'm trying to fit into some box that is just not as expansive as I would like to be. Yeah. And so I have trouble figuring out how to do that in a way that will resonate with them. And I think maybe a lot of times, I forget to just be like, here's what I can do. Yeah. And I did that with Bono that day and I think that helped because I obviously, yeah. Cause I was gonna ask the two of you, we have, we have actors watching from all around the world these interviews and you know, everybody thinks, oh, it's Reed Carney, it's Evil Noblezada. They just get offered stuff. I mean, are you, when you audition, do you, do you consider yourselves good auditioners? No. I don't, no. Every single audition except for Miss Saigon, I didn't think I was going to get because they were horrible, including Hades Town, including Lamez, including literally everything I've done. I thought they were horrible auditions. Because um, it's like, I will say without sounding weird, I've always lost roles because, and I don't know, I have such issues with my, with, I have issues with, with things without getting into it. And, that always gets in my way because I I go, well, the casting directors have a standard. Like they always cast the same looking people and then I always lose to those people. So I always think like I can bring all my talent to the table, but if they're not willing to like cast a, you know, a, you know, a woman of color who's not like a size double zero, like do I have a chance? And I've, because I also get comments from those people about stuff like that, it keeps me, it holds me back. So every time I get called in for an audition, it's like, I like Reeve saying, it's like, you have to fit into a box rather than go, hey, here's what I have. It might not be what you've seen today, but if you're willing to work with it, I don't know. It's just, I, I'm very, very bad at auditions because I always think that they are thinking what I'm thinking and that's not always true. Um, and I think part of our problem is because we, I think we both think of ourselves, which other people might not, but I, I would think of ourselves more as character actors than like yeah. leading personally. I mean that, um, which might sound weird, but like, no, no. because we love to, um, I, I think when you get it, you don't want to do the same thing every role. You don't no. want to be typecast. And, and so you want to do your best to try to figure out where you can exist in these different characters. Absolutely. And so just doing your thing, we could do that maybe, whatever that might be, but, it but it's not gets, interesting to us. Yeah, no, yeah. And so maybe that stands in the way sometimes, I'm not sure. Auditions but are weird. That's where I'm, I don't think I'm a good auditioner either because you're trying to, not that you're trying to please someone, but you're trying to, first of all, I guess you're trying to, you know, get the job and, yeah. you're, and you're trying to tr prove to yourself that you can do something that you haven't done before. And that's hard to but do that's sometimes so silly. because they're looking for whatever they're looking for. Yeah. Yeah. It's, no, it's, yeah, it's so interesting because we don't see that. And the interesting thing is everything both of you has done, have done is totally different than the, sh the part before. I mean, when you look at your careers, nothing is the same. Thanks. I think it's really great with what, what you both, both achieved so far in your careers. You don't sort of repeat what you've done before, which I think is really, really cool. Thanks, Thanks. Richie.
I mean, you may see some, like, like I said, everyone, everybody I've spoken to, every star has said auditions are really weird. They said, I've never gotten a job from an audition. A lot of them have said either people have offered me something or I'm like, watch me on three seasons of Penny Dreadful. Then you'll see what you can do, right? Yeah, yeah. right? It is interesting. Like, I, I find that I probably more of the time do get, the work that I do get seems to come from people who know that they want me for whatever reason. And that's than, the thing. Yeah. It's a for me. It's about like perspective. Like if a, a wonderful, you know, director or casting director has an open perspective to go, who can tell the story and who can do very good at the job, rather than who looks good in the job, yeah. for, for many other reasons other than appearance. Like that's when the magic happens. Like who's speaking to here, and if th these two connect, that's like money, rather than like, does do they look? I don't know. I just have such issues. Everybody said you can only go in there, do what you do, present what you do, and walk out and let it all go. Yeah, that's <laughs> hard to do. The best, you can, the best you can do is your best. And even if you think it's a train wreck, you can't go back in time. So just like, de la vie. <laughs> totally. And then you hear these people say, oh, I did a train wreck audition. I got a job. Right. Town. <laughs> that's what she said. Yeah. Are you serious? Hades yeah. Town. I had never put two together that I was auditioning with Dorian Gray for my chemistry read. And I'd seen like two seasons. And then I walk in there, not even putting it together that it was frickin' Reeve, and I couldn't act straight. I could not act correctly. And I just kept thinking, like, I've seen your butt, I've seen your butt, I've seen your butt. <laughs> and then the whole time I'm singing and I'm like shaking and then we do wedding song first and it went okay. It went okay because I was like, he hates me. He doesn't like me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love that. He yeah, thinks yeah. I look like a, like a potato. He, he doesn't like me at all. And then they were like, can you sing flowers? And I was like, of course. He sits in the back of the room and watches me sing flowers. <laughs> <laughs> like it was horrible. I, want, I, I wanted to hear just for my own enjoyment. Oh my god! The, uh, You're lucky. It went well, man. Yeah, I know. I, I didn't. I didn't know. They didn't tell me to leave. So. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, he's sitting down. Okay. Oh. I love it. I didn't know about your chemistry read together. I, I never heard this story. It was my only audition. So hope, thankfully, yeah. they saw something good. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, oh, believe me, they saw something good because yeah. the chemistry your chemistry together and the whole chemistry of everybody in Hades town it's it's one of those first shows when everything opens up again i so want to be there like the mm. first night you all open up again and just go on that journey with all of you because it's such a beautiful beautiful show Hades okay. town everything you you give and like you said you need the audience the audience just falls in love with that show yeah 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 i think people lose their mind over the lamps like oh. the lamps period but put the lamps <laughs> like for me it's like I don't know, like that, that's funny, but also like incredible to me that people lose their mind over the swinging lamps. But also the fact that Reeve is in the front, like holding the flower. And like, I watch that number almost every night from side stage, like almost every night I watch Wait For Me. And that's one thing I'm very much looking forward to um, when I get back. Yeah, the longer it goes, it's like, wow, I, I don't even remember. Like, thankfully we had the album because I'm like, <laughs> I think my plan would be listen to the album for like a week straight and then go into and the then end. go in and maybe you'd be sort of okay with a couple of days rehearsal. Uh, it just seems like I none of it. It's so far. In yeah, the, the list of things up. that I can quote better than Hades Town right now are extremely random. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can quote the men menus from Popeyes. Yeah, a, a yeah, lot, he could. I could quote Patty Lo um, <laughs> Patty Labelle's Christmas extravaganza with my backup fingers better than I can quote Hades Town. Spicy chicken sandwich combo. If you at no. <laughs> But make it fast for the hot sauce, so they never put it in the back. Yeah, that is true, and I <laughs> and they are correct when they say it's the perfect hot sauce. It is. I love that. You know, I want to talk about some of the. You know, <laughs> Yellow Rose is a project. I tell you, Eva, I love that your film Yellow Rose. Thanks, it's, Richie. It's incredible. We yeah, we, yeah. Sorry, keep going. No, you go ahead, Reeve. Go ahead. It's <laughs> really brilliant. <laughs> We did take a trip because there was no there were no theaters in Manhattan or playing it, so we drove to Connecticut and took a short mini to a weekend out of it and stayed in one of the oldest hotels, the Griswold Inn. Richie, you guys would love that place. Wow. Yeah, you would, um, but we but got to see it in the theater. I will show so you cool. this very. Was, we were the only ones because we went late at night, so it was this really very good. funny. Oh God, you're not gonna be able to see it because it's so dark. But y literally, like Reeve and I, uh, oh. see flowers. How do I get rid of that? <laughs> that thing <laughs> but we were the only people and it it honestly looked like a, a cinema from stranger things like i feel like the monster was going to come out of the bathroom stall and like grab me down rip, pull me to the underworld yeah. but um it was creepy remember that one cop that was also outside yeah it was the weirdest, the weirdest experience of watching my premiere 
Yeah. <laughs> that I could drink. But it, was but it must have been so cool to be in the movie theater by yourselves, just the two of you watching you make your feature film debut in Yellow Rose. Yeah, it was. And and I mean, it'll do. this is something that I think will have an extremely good life on demand. Yeah. Mm. Because with the way things are now, it's, it's unfortunate that it had to come out, you know, when people can't go to the theater as much. Yeah. But people watching this, you got to watch Yellow Rose when it comes out which, on demand, which, which it will hopefully be soon. Faith Carney tells you to do it. Yeah. Well, like I said, your breakout performance is absolutely brilliant in that film. Thanks, Richie. And I want to ask you, what are your favorite memories of making that? And was it like a pinch me moment working with Leia Salonga, the original Kim? From this side well, on yes. in the movie? I, I have pinch me moments when I'm able to text her stupid stuff. Thankfully, she's not, you know, I once randomly texted her and I had a little bit too much to drink. Um, um, look at me in all caps, in all different texts, look at me. I will never pass for a perfect ride. Randomly at three in the morning. And she was like, ha, huh. like, thankfully, she thinks that stuff's funny. Um, you were like, I sent that? No, I wasn't, but, no, no, but I genuinely woke up here laughing and go, oh man, I really did send that text to Leia Salonga <laughs> when I was drunk. But um, I will say, I had never done a film before, yeah. but it felt right. So, and to work with, I mean, it, the, the crew was, and the everybody, it was such a small amount of people. So we really got stuff done. And then the celebration, the day that we ended, like the guy who plays Dale Watson, his name is Dale Watson. He's a literal country rock singer. Um, he had a concert on the last day and we all came and I went up there and I sang an Etta song and it was just fun. It was like, we had a proper two week work schedule and then a really great long celebration of like all the hard work we put in. I mean, shooting a feature in less than 18 days. So. And you didn't have much rehearsal for that either, did you? We had no. two days rehearsal. That's crazy. Now, my first scene I shot was with Leia Salonga. So thankfully it was like a nice icebreaker. Well, and especially because it wasn't like on a lot of films you'll have, uh, you know, maybe not, you don't have much rehearsal on film and t TV, but usually you have a few more takes with them. They barely had time to do takes. So literally all of her stuff is like- Everything outside was shot in that, was it called Magic Hour? Yeah. And so Diane, Magic Hour. So Diane, would, yeah. the director would say, okay, we have one chance to do this, go. Ah. <laughs> so, That's with no rehearsal. That's yeah. insane. I a mean, lot of it was improvised. But, you know, a lot of great stars I've spoken to, like with telephone scenes and all this stuff, and they're like, we only have one take on this. They come out brilliant because you're all theater actors. You're, 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 you're stage people. You're stage animals. So you're like, you know, right? Yeah, but Eva is like extremely, I mean, I'm a very methodical person in a lot of ways. And like the fact, that, the fact that Eva can do that, I mean, that's so impressive, that type of acting to me where you, where you but I know what you mean about theater people for sure. But the fact that you can, I don't know, like just take direction that quickly and process it all and do it in, and you only have one take, whoa. Because the thing about theater I love is one take every night, yeah. but you continue to refine it. That's why I love theater because you get to yeah. refine it over time. And, and, and yeah. you can kind of come back from it in the show. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. There's, a, there's redemption there. I think Jeff Daniels told me, he said, Jack Nicholson put it best. He said, nothing like making motion pictures. It's the million dollar magic time. You have that sun, that one shot before the sun goes down and you've got to do your monologue and you do it in one take. Yeah, that, Amen. Oh yeah, outdoor stuff, wow. No. I would love to do that. that yeah. cool. Well, Reva, I want to ask you about Penny Dreadful. I mean, three incredible seasons, Dorian Gray. You know, I, we've got your Reeve doll here, your Dorian Gray doll. <laughs> I mean, we were obsessed with that show. I mean, how magical was that for you being a part of that? It was, uh, I mean, it was great for me. I mean, and uh, I mean, living in Dublin was amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've, I've thought during this time, like, oh man, let's go to Dublin. <laughs> but I'm actually really happy. I love New York. But there yeah. were times when it was like, oh no, like this does not feel like New York, except for the architecture. That was, but um, I've loved, I loved working in Dublin. Um, and the cast was amazing. Uh, getting to have breakfast with Timothy Dalton every day for a while at the Shelburne Hotel when we were staying there, that was really special and cool. Waking up and having him just say, come on over, let's, wow, that was cool. <laughs> but I mean, you learn a lot from all these actors. Uh, so I, I, yeah, I, I do love, um, I mean, there are things I love about theater versus film and TV, but I like uh, I like the chance of being able to exist as a character for a few years, and then in those breaks, go home and have time for six months to think about things that I would take in or not like focus on that would help me with the character. Mm -hmm. Just like you know, anything. You the more time you have to uh, ruminate on something, I guess you can 
I don't know. I, I like that about about TV in particular because with the film you only have maybe three months, maybe six if it's a crazy film to do that. And this was three years of playing that same character. It's cool. That's amazing. Now, can I ask you about you playing Tom Ford in that new film? Can you tell us yeah. anything? It's all over the place. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think uh, I don't know much, but I, you know, I, yeah, all I saw was the the article of uh, the, the the fact that someone like you know. That, that team say is it, crazy. Say it. No, I'm, say I'm it. Someone like Ridley Scott. Well, that team is crazy. I, I just couldn't believe the article when I when it came out. I was like, wow, it's, being in that company was, was... But doesn't it make sense? Like, he's so humble. It totally makes sense. So, Eva, I'm going to ask you, tell us about Reeve playing Tom Ford in this new movie. And who's in this movie? And who's directing this? I don't, well, Ridley... Freaking Scott! I, I wish I could. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know. You know what I mean? I, I'm not sure. I think what you I know can. what I want to say, but also yeah. Lady Gaga. Yeah. <laughs> Lady Gaga. Yeah, I don't know what can be said. I mean, other than what's there, which is the article of like he's eyeing people. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Well, all I can say is the article is out there. You are in yeah. some incredible company. So when you can announce all of this officially, but it's out there already. I mean, it's yeah, all yeah, out yeah. there. Yeah. I just yeah. It's, it I, makes I think sense. the pandemic has made everything. Um, the timelines of things, no one knows. There's a lot of things that people That's don't know. True. But you must be so psyched. I mean, boy, you playing Tom Ford, how incredible. Well, he's a, he's a really cool guy and uh, obviously an incredible designer. It's been, yeah, I mean, thank you. All right. He's so humble. I love Reeve. He's always, he's so humble. Humble. <laughs> but like I said, we're just so excited. That was like the cherry on the top of the, the cake during this pandemic when we saw that article, we're like, that's really incredible. You know, we're almost out of time. My final question for both of you is, what have you learned about yourselves during this pandemic? Uh, we, I don't know. I think I've learned, uh, I'm not sure, what have you learned? You may have a better. I miss my friends. Yeah. I love pole dancing. You do. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I'm very good at it. Um, I don't. Here's something that's related to the theater, but not. It depends how you want to take it. I don't ever want to say yes to things that take me away from living my life. Does that make that make that make sense? I mean, this this pandemic, uh, because now we're unemployed, is my first break in like seven and something years, like proper break. And I realized like how much I wasn't able to be a young woman. It was just working and being pushed to the front where um, I, I was like a workhorse. And I realized how important it is to choose, choose projects that um, give me something too. And uh, money aside, give me like a sense of purpose rather than here's your place in the machine, do your job because we need to make money. Um, so I guess, giving yourself passion projects, which is a perfect leeway into the fact that Reeve has literally created a company and products that are in exceptional <laughs> and does all of the work. It just, you know, finding things in your life that truly make you happy. And like, for me, it's pole. For me, it's like doing a podcast. For me, it's like, you know, using my feelings to, to create power and, and things that, I don't know, things that make me feel like I'm doing something wonderful. And that also make me very happy. And I know Reeves found that as mm -hmm. well. Um, but without any, I mean, I'm very grateful to have not have quarantined alone. So if you're still doing that, I send you a lot of love and like, hopefully you find like communities online or just know that this is not gonna last forever. <laughs> I, that's what I'm trying to think. Um, so Beautifully yeah. put. Reeve, for you. I mean, I, I'm, I, I kind of deal relatively well with being, uh, not around a large amount of people. So uh, if, if Eva weren't here, it would be very difficult for me, but this is kind of enough for me. Like I don't really need to have anybody else around regularly as much as I miss my friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But um, so I don't know, I think, yeah. I, I mean, I, like Eva said with the things I'm working on, the effects pedals, uh, I find that I get a lot of fulfillment out of that. Like I, I've been obsessive with, like sort of in my search for tone, musically speaking, since I started playing guitar. And so the idea that I get to spend all day crafting those tones for myself and for other musicians is really, mm. for me, really great. I, I, I love doing it. 
I love it. I have had the best time catching up with you two. I miss you so much. You know that. We miss you. We miss you so much. <laughs> Listen, everybody, your concerts again. Eva, your concert is this Friday night, um, November 20th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Reeve, yours is Thursday, December 3rd at 7 p.m. Tickets are available at Broadway World Events and at Birdland Jazz. I cannot wait to see you in the flesh again, both of you. You know, we'll get together sooner than later. Everybody else, stay safe, wear a mask, wash your hands, and we'll see you soon. Take care, everyone. See you, Richie. Bye.